Welcome back, Existential Way, Kevin Meredith here. Obverse psychology and its restrictions to the faith of the world. This is what we're going to talk about today, guys. How obverse psychology in this carnality is used to limit and or give the illusion of faith in order that what we know as Christendom today can be accepted by the establishment and or the New World Order and or the crowd, all right, the apostasy that's going on. So, the order or the orator or the narcissist will conduct a conversation using obverse psychology, meaning that this person will use one side of the coin to benefit his or her own conversation toward another, per another person, toward another, or even towards the crowd, pretending that both sides of the coin don't exist. And this is what we have going on in the world today is we, we're in a church system where there's no power or authority of the Holy Spirit. It, it exists on one side of the coin, the coin that you're always blinded to. to. The, the, part of the, the side of the coin that they never want you to, to actually come to the understanding of. What I've noticed is that <clears throat> our faith and or spiritual walk as Christians today, the ones who are accepted by the world, play to well, first what they're told about this side, the other side of the coin, the, the side that they're going to give you, the obverse side of the coin, the, the one in which they're going to show you face value, what it is that, that comprises your faith. And so, what I've, from my observation, what has replaced the spirit, man's spirit, and or the Holy Spirit as well, is the side of the coin that they don't want to show you. What they want to give the believer, or the so-called believer today, is a system where the five senses have replaced the power of God in your life. They want to talk about taste, touch, sight, smell, hearing, the, the natural affections of the flesh. And they want to replace intuition, sensory six, and or Holy Spirit, sensory seven. So, sen sensory six and sensory seven of the human spiritual world, the eternal, is a side of the coin that they don't want you to see. Because once you understand the side of the coin that they don't want you to see, once you understand that, you understand the whole coin for what it is. You break through the obverse psychology that is manipulating, that has, that has, that has kept you grounded or kept you believing that the five fleshly senses of the human condition, the human existence, um, are not the actual faith. So in, in terms of obverse psychology and how it's being used in, in our universe today, I want you to picture this because the coin is so, it's so expletive, it's so explanational in how the faith of the believer is being manipulated. Now, the pastor or the, the orator, the one speaking, even the, the preconditioned manipulation of speech given to the believer today is one based on five senses, and he or she is told that these senses are the, are the works of the Holy Spirit. This is what it is to have faith, when in reality it's not. This is what they're telling you in order for you to have faith. And this is why um, intuition and Holy Spirit are actually left out, because let's use, for example, the coin. It has metaphysical properties, okay? the place where the metaphysical properties actually give advantage to the world is through the idea of obverse in psychology or um, uh, one side of the coin being displayed at all times and being conceived as truth for you. So the properties that are metaphysical are things that attract the fallen flesh, actually, the five senses. They attract. There's properties to a coin. There's properties to this existence there's properties to what we're taught that attract 
these five initial senses to the human being, to the human condition. Not the complete human being, the human condition. All right? So the world, or the crowd, plays to this. They play this tune to gravitating towards the five senses and, 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 and making wanting everyone to believe that this is what it is to have a relationship with God. All right? But now, when you as a believer, you and I, as we've gone through existence, some things have showed us that this metaphysical attraction to the face value of this one side of the coin, this universe, there's something that has gone awry. There's something that is wrong here. There is something where the Holy Spirit is not, cannot make, nor is making a connection to gravitating us towards this form of, of psychology in which there's a metaphysical attraction of the, the first five human senses in replacing our faith and in us conducting our life's business as if this is the totality of faith, which most of the world does. That's, that's, there's something wrong there. That, that's a sickness. That's sickness. That's a conditioning that belongs to the state of the fallen flesh, to the fallen human condition. Now, so when we talk about getting in and really looking at, you have to understand that first, who is speaking to get you to believe in the face value or the illusion, pretending that he or she will take the advantage of, of using whatever side of the coin will get your attention without you seeing the whole coin for what it is, without you seeing both sides. So there, there's a time... Targeted individuals eventually come to a point where there's not a there, before a breakthrough. There's a breakdown. There's a breakdown in conditioning. You we've gone through this conditioning so long that the one side of the coin thing in which we see has been it, it no longer works. It it has been it's a broken machine in a time that we've been enlightened to see the whole coin for what it is, and this is what they don't want you to see. The narcissist does not want you to see his conversation in which he or she will pretend that both sides of the coin don't exist. When, when in actuality, this kind of person, this kind of order, plays to one side of the coin to his or her advantage and gets you to believe that for face value, because the construct of this world is, is shallow. It's metaphysical. It attracts certain types of people, certain bloodlines, certain spiritual frequencies, certain energies, certain uh, ways of existence to it. And that's the, that's the totality of the crowd, the established idea. But a select few will begin to see the, the whole coin for what it is. And where metaphysics plays to one side of the coin in, in bringing about a great illusion to the crowd the Holy Spirit will begin to bring about a disengagement, a, a disattachment, a thing where we, we, we begin to look at one side of the coin and we say, hey, wait, that's not the works of the Holy Spirit. Because there's, there's, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a repealing, there's a pulling back, there's a, a sanctification, if you will. So to the world, to the coin, the, the, the Hegelian dialectic of the coin's existence, this carnality, and the way the positive and negative um, polar opposites are extrapolated for one another, for the for the false illusion to continue in its its um, eminence towards towards false self, towards the crowd. This is where we begin to see. Wait, the five senses as being construed as the things of the Holy Spirit. This is not the Holy Spirit. This is man's work. This is the, the work of the fallen flesh. And so now we begin to repeal. We, we pull back. We see. First, we, we begin to enter what we know maybe as an intuitive sensory towards a, in the direction of a more complete human being. We're intuitive now. That's, and I would connote this as man's spirit uh, becoming activated. Where the, 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 the logical, the, reason, the reasonable, the the flexible, the mental capacity, the, the, the mental flexibility to see, to, to really challenge oneself. Intuition arises in that person, okay, to make this person a free moral agent now. And, and this person begins disattaching himself from the duality of, of, the, of the obverse psychology that the coin represents. 
whether it's physical or not, doesn't make a difference. It's physical. The physical properties emanate a belief system that, the only, the, that only attracts the world. And for so long, we've gone through our existence because we never belonged to it in this manner. You and I were always meant to move on to and exist in the sensory systems that are not of the first five sensories. Taste, touch, sight, smell, hearing. We were, we were created to first uh, be broken. We had to be broken down traumatically to get to a breakdown process to gain intuition. And then we had to have the breakthrough where we now have the choice to take a leap of faith into, say, sensory seven, the Holy Spirit. Okay? So you see that the conjunction of the spirit, man, when, when one becomes a free moral agent, which God, that, that's what we know as humility. This is what we know as a man, a man choosing a, a humility, choosing to be humble, choosing to come before God. And then, not just staying there, though, Yes, we do. We, we, our existence has changed now, but we, we, have, we have the power of choice to take the leap of faith now. So humility actually, the full expression of humility is to doubt what you don't know. But its, but it's existence is, is actually uh, being powerfully moved into the actual works of the Holy Spirit. So now we see that the conditions and the breakdowns are happening. You have a breakdown and you're moving into intuitive spirit, man. And now you're going to have a breakthrough. You're going to you're going to take a leap of faith and do Holy Spirit, and, and this is where the kingdom kingdom of God dwells within you. Uh, you know, and the things of the world they don't they don't magnify or or pull you in in the way that they used to. You, you, and, and even at times where we really tried to cling to those things because we were trying to fit in, we didn't know who we were. We didn't come to the the thorough, intuitive man that we are now as targeted individuals. So, there is something that I've observed where the intuitive person who's in recognition of, of, him, of himself or herself now is qualified or called out by the Holy Spirit. Sensory seven. The Holy Spirit is, it works in conjunction with the individual the individual human being. It cannot necessarily... God's overall objective can use the first five centuries of the crowd to commission His will for those who are individuals, ultimately. And that's what He's doing. That's what we're seeing right now. Is The busybodies of humanity are only preparing things for the New Jerusalem. The things of the, the, the Holy Spirit. The kingdom where the believer, the actual believer in Christ, is to rule and reign. In in, in 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 the parts the unseen the un the, the, sen, the not the first five senses, but the ones that God gives to us that, that that are of His actual work. So we're saying that wait we're in a society where the first five senses are actually actually considered if they're manipulated in the right way to the ob obverse in psychology of what we know as Christendom today. That's not the Holy Spirit nor the act of God and act of God in one's life. That's the control of, of this mechanism, this machine for individuals who make up the crowd and are given a script of faith that this is the, this is the Holy Spirit. Although it's not really the Holy Spirit, it's really a, a manip manipulation based on a set of preconditions that when you're feeling good, when all these things are coming about in your life, that that is the work of God. And you have a true relationship with God as an individual believer of the crowd. But see, now this is what happens. is When, when you and I, the, cho the chosen targeted individual, enters a, a deeper state of understanding, realizing that these things don't work for us. We don't resonate that way. When God chooses us out, we become free moral agents to now enact the true value of free will the true existence of it. And that is a powerful choice that they've never wanted you to have. Because by that choice, you are disengaging, you are not in agreement with the, the, the Hegelian dialectic. The, the, the set of preconceived answers to any questions that you may have, you and I, we're no longer part of that. Okay? Now we are free moral agents. We are intuitive spirit man with the opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit. And actually you find yourself disengaging, disattaching from this carnality in that respect. 
because it's not actual spirit. Those are senses being told to you that the five senses are things that are not Holy Spirit. They're not, they're not even spirit of man. Because the spirit of the intuitive man is actually driven in conjunction, in conjunction or in cohesion with the things of the Holy Spirit and relating to God. We don't find human beings who are actually happy-go-lucky god fears in the five sensory category. We really don't. And I've played to that tune before where I really thought, man, if I'm feel, but I don't feel that way. I don't, five senses, I feel burdened by the five senses. I feel very constricted, very burdened at this point. Where I used to want to, I used to really want the five senses to be a negotiable aspect of my relationship with God. But through the existential process, the, 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 the honoring of the process, and giving God the glory through this struggle, through the flesh, through the trials, the tribulations, and even what we're going through now, we're seeing that those five senses are, are, are the senses of a human existence. Not the existence of a follower of Christ and the things of the Holy Spirit or of God's will for your life. Those things are, in a way, those are outside of us waiting to come into us to show us that the obverse psychology at face value is a, is a lie. It's, a, it's, a, it's an illusion that attracts the crowd of the world. It, attra it attracts the world. And so this is why obverse psychology is so... It's being used randomly because it's, it's used to manipulate. It's used, and, and see, what do you notice about the use of obverse psychology? It's not the same as... It, it, couldn't, it is a stemming of, of reverse psychology. But reverse psychology is more predictable to the enlightened one. But obverse psychology takes a matter of exist, existence to see through how both sides of the coin are played without... played against the one who is, is looking at, at, at one side of the coin uh, by making that person believe that the other side of the coin doesn't exist. And, and how the orator will display by hiding, by showing uh, face value. And see, the world is so shallow, it receives everything at face value. That's the totality of that. The individual of the crowd, his, his or her whole world is based on face value. And that face value is the, the metaphysical attraction of the five senses. It's not the real, true existence of the Holy Spirit, because the real, true existence of the Holy Spirit is, is repeal. I'm repealed, or I'm repulsed by that even if I'm going through some of the struggles of the Hegelian dialectic, which are always going to burden us because we're chosen, targeted individuals, we see through that now. That thing has, 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 has broken us down, and now we're having a breakthrough. Now, now we're stepping through. And God is, God is showing us something here now. Okay? So, what was I going to say? Now, oh, I just forgot what I was going to say on the other aspect, because I keep jumping. But, um, interestingly enough, when you begin to see the use of obverse psychology, it's actually very limiting. It's not the work of God. It's the work of the dialectic to keep people controlled. Okay, now, when we're talking about we're still in the world and not of it. So we have to bear the restrictions of it. We have to bear the, 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 the attacks psychological, the, and it's always like a feeling, like a metaphysical feeling of, of just being tired, the energy being sucked out of you, and you're just, ah, it's always having to bear a weight that is so metaphysically constructed for the dialectic of this coin. When you see through that and you, you're repealed by it, you're repulsed now. Because it's not a thing of the Holy Spirit. It's not an act. The act of the Holy Spirit is to repulse or repeal one away from um, the existence of this world, which is obverse psychology. That's the whole existence of the craft of this world. And I use craft because it's like, it's, it's a Masonic existence. The, this carnality is a fleshly, masonic, metaphysical, uh, forced illusion onto human beings. 
it's not an act, a true act of the Holy Spirit for God to sanctify one away. Because if it is, you'll be able to see not only the face value of one side of the coin, but the illusion of them hiding the premise uh, or using both sides to their own advantage, all the while pretending that both sides of the coin doesn't exist. See, this is the obverse psychology, is there's a layering to that. You, you, have, to, you have to give the spiritual, you have to give the unseen a physical uh, uh, stage so you, or, or an or a object for you to bring about this realization of what it is they're doing. So I use the coin as an analogy to their to the to the psychology of, of existence up by the world. So we're not in it, but we're 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 um, we're in it, but we're not of it. But we're feeling its existence contradict uh, the repulsion that the Holy Spirit gives us to it now. Okay, so understand that this is the way of the world. Obverse psychology is the way of the world. It's the broad way. People are, they're, 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 they're drowned because they lack knowledge. They're held captive because they lack knowledge. But the chosen, you know, the, 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 the targeted Christian, the chosen one, we see that we were always meant to be individual um, spirit. We were meant to be individual spirit in relation to the Holy Spirit. 